I am Dominique Enriquez, and I was Yolanda's niece. I am Maria Laron Castro, and Yolanda was my mom. So Yolanda was my aunt, it's my my mom's sister, and she I consider her one of the matriarchs of our family. She helped raise uh, not only her own children, but all of the cousins. Between the seven of us, there you know, we were all raised like siblings almost. Um, I grew up here in the Bay Area, and the rest of my family is on the East Coast, but we were all really close growing up. Um, Tita Yol had a part in like raising all of us when we were younger. <laughs> it's funny, she potty trained every single <laughs> one of us, <laughs> like one of her claims to fame. Um, but when it, when it comes to like parenting and when I think about who raised me, Tita Yol is definitely one of those people, whether it was near or far, um, so that's why she holds a very special place in my heart. Of course, she's my mom. So um, she meant everything to me. And uh, she, you know, she was probably, even though she probably seems, she could have came off as a very weak person. She's very sensitive and, uh, uh you know, even probably her personality, you know, is very sensitive and probably not aggressive um, enough as probably as a mom and or as an individual, but she is probably one of the strongest people that I know. My mom was um, physically disabled from polio um, all her life, um, which she got back then in the 50s in the Philippines um, her whole life. I'm sure that wasn't easy for her. Um, obviously, again, both physically and mentally, but yet she seemed to have raised um, me and my brother pretty much as a single mom in New York City at that. She's also just probably one of the most nicest, kind-hearted person, persons I've ever known in my life. Um, you know, and it's easy to say that about somebody, but she really will, you know, um, go all out to do anything um, for some, for people that she doesn't even know so and it's and it and it's amazing and what I'm loving now is how a lot of people see that in me you know for my mom and and it's kind of nice to hear that and you know it's it's really nice so um and I and I owe her that I owe her everything uh, one time <laughs> I was probably like seven years old and, you know, we were too poor to have a babysitter. So she would actually have to take me to work um, every day after school. And there was one day where she picked me up from school. My school was probably like two, three blocks, which I know is not that long, but somebody that has polio, I'm sure it wasn't easy for her to do that every day, but it was storming like raining and we had this one tiny little umbrella that she she bought at like the 99 cent store we're trying to hold on to this like little umbrella and all we could do is just keep on laughing and laughing while we're trying to walk to her job so and it's funny because it was probably you know if anything it'd probably be more of a pain in the ass but i don't know why me and my mom thought it hilarious <laughs> to to do that um so I thought that was that was funny and then my last little one it's funny because it's kind of a recurring memory of her um every time um me and my mom she we loved going to Marshalls and Home Goods and there's a at the one that we had by our house it had a hat section so like and not just like regular hats it's like hats that they would use for like the Kentucky Derby <laughs> and our thing was where we would just try it on and pretend that we were going somewhere fancy and we would take pictures so that's just another stupid cute memory that I have from my mom <laughs> okay 
a couple of things I thought about just in you sharing those stories because I don't feel like I have one standout memory of you know like story but like the two things I'm hearing that definitely like connect with me is one her laughter just like her silliness <laughs> she always poked at like something to make it funny like my brother is not a very not affectionate person and so whenever we would be together at family gatherings Tito Gil would always pick on my brother and be like kiss me <laughs> just like embarrassing him and making light of it and laughing the whole time like that kind of captures her silliness her brother was definitely was not affectionate and it was always hilarious seeing that my mom trying to smother him when my cousin found out that my mom died he was going for a run what he said to um, my mom I think uh, to your mom is you know I really wish I kissed her <laughs> so yeah just yeah. cute <laughs> the other thing I think about when I think about TTL is you know because she did have a physical disability and she was in a wheelchair for you know the last decade or so Family was so important to her, you know, like, and when we saw each other at weddings or at uh, like family gatherings, you know, whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, somebody's birthday, our families don't come from like huge homes or whatever. And she would always just be like tucked away in a corner and would be so content in watching the family just be together in the same space. It's like such a core part to me of like what our family gatherings look like. And because of the pandemic, we haven't all been together, I think maybe since my wedding. <laughs> I don't know, it's been a long time. To think about future gatherings without that section, <laughs> you know, with like Mama and Tito Paul and Tito Yo all in a corner is just, it's like such a huge void. For someone who could be described as like having a physical limitation and like having to be contained, she took up the whole room, you know? Everybody would take the time out to spend some time with her. And when they were spending the time with her, they were laughing. <laughs> like it's such a big presence in terms of like what family gatherings are. I can't even imagine what it's going to look or feel like without her. And it's funny, Nicole, because you know, when um, when you guys were asking for pictures of, of my mom, it, it really was hard to find a picture of her by herself because it's always her with one of us, mm -hmm. one of us in the pictures and she's making some crazy silly face or something, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So that's why it was really hard. It, it was interesting to know that it was hard to find a picture of her by herself. And that, that really is why, is because we were always just like hugging and that's how she was, that's how we were with her, so. And it's funny because I, like I hear us talking about Titigo and stories and stuff. I feel like none of, the, none of the words can do it justice, just like what her presence was in the world. And in like such a quiet and powerful way, she embodied that kind of love and that kind of care, that kind of unconditional love, that kind of unconditional acceptance. I always knew, you know, Maria describes a little bit like, you know, our families didn't have a lot growing up, but I always knew the time that I was gonna spend at Maria and T. Deal's house, you know, in the summers and stuff that there would be love, that there would be laughter, that I would be safe in ways that I you take for granted as a like, young person and is so instrumental to like who I am as a as an adult and as as my daughter's adult, you know, as her grown up. And it means a lot to me because like I didn't see T all every day, you know. And like, that's how meaningful her love and care was to me. Like how much that means is, is it's, it has stayed with me in such a powerful way that I can give that 
to my own child. It was so humble and sincere. It was just the way that she was in the world. You know, that I don't take that for granted at all. Hearing, hearing Maria describe her mom that like maybe some people could perceive her as weak. I see it as like humility. She was just so humble, but so strong. She she knew her love for her family. It was like without question, without a doubt, whether it be her own children, her niece, anybody, like anyone knew they could rely on her. I would have to agree. Um, I couldn't even say that there was necessarily like an exact, you know, like, you know, life quote that, she would use or say it, it really is her presence and it's really just like an energy about my mom it's crazy it, it's like significant when she would see me or you know or see my cousins and their babies <laughs> you know it's just you know even through zoom we were doing this whole zoom thing through the pandemic you know all of us and our, have our little online karaoke, you know, she had such a presence because, you know, I could hear my mom's voice, right? Nick? It's like, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hi, hi, Ella, hi, Pedro, you know, <laughs> and it, and that's, you know, it's just like, again, the way she says it, she sounds so silly, you know, and everybody, you know, we're, friends that our whole family is very you know silly but um the way she would say things it, it, it was really even during these zoom calls we would have like once a month during the family it's like you felt it you know and it just made her so happy you know especially I felt so horrible that she couldn't being in a wheelchair she really already being stuck physically in a wheelchair and then during COVID being stuck in an apartment you know, I I give her a lot of credit for um, staying as positive as as she you know she did, and um, and never sh like you said, it's the humility with her. It's like she just never shown. She never liked to show that she's weak. You know, I know it could be perceived sometimes from the outside, but. She, she never showed that. She never had those signs. It was incredible. And I really miss that. But seeing her, seeing her like that, I think that has extended to a lot of us um, that it's just kind of like, you know, life can suck. But at the same time, you know, like, this is the way shit is. And just as long as you have your family and you love them, then that's, that's all that matters. And she was very spiritual too. So I think that helped a lot, you know, like her strong Catholicism, belief in Catholicism. You know, she was just like, I have God, my family, my love, and I'm just gonna keep practicing that every day, no matter how miserable she was at time. And I think that was already a great statement, you know, without an actual saying or quote. One of the reasons, you know, I or we felt called to submit when we saw the ancestral altar is, you know, like we're talking about Titiol and how sort of like essential family was, like what a core value or part of her life family was. And it was so difficult with COVID for us to not be able to gather and grieve together in her passing. So having the, this opportunity through like, a, you know, this communal event and having an artist create a work to commemorate her, it just feels like one way that we could just honor who she was in the world. And I feel so honored and happy to have the opportunity. Like Maria's gonna fly out here, we'll get to be together. We just feel really honored and excited about this opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
So I, I just want to say thank you to, it, it definitely is an honor, you know, and it's a great way to celebrate her, especially since, um, like I mentioned, you know, we didn't have a proper funeral or, or wake and um, get together with my family or anything like that. And um, kind of to end on a positive note, um, I got a promotion this week. <laughs> and and um, I finally, after two years, settled. Um, I, I don't mean to talk about money, but I had so much, I had such a hard time having to settle a lot of like insurance and everything. And um, that finally settled this week. And um and we finally were able to save up to start looking for a house next week. So I just am so happy and also a little bit bittersweet because I wish I had my mom here to experience all this with. Um, but at the same time, I know a lot of it is just like her doing, you know, and I know she'd be so happy for me. <laughs> So I'm just really overwhelmed with feelings. <laughs> so, and you know, with all these recent events, you know, it's kind of great. 